In this video, we're going to go through how you can migrate a workload, in this case the payment service for an online store from a virtual machine to a GKE autopilot cluster. Before I dive into the core of the demo, let me say this demo assumes you are already familiar with both Migrate for GKE and GKE Autopilot. If you're not, you might want to pause the video and go get a quick overview of both of these offerings and then come back and rejoin me. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at. This is our initial architecture. You can see the payment service is there on the left in blue, and it's running in a VM. When we're done, that will be migrated to a container like all the other services in the online boutique. So let's go ahead and take a look at that online boutique and see it actually in action. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to click on this barista set. I'm going to add to cart, and I'm just going down and place my order, and you can see everything works as expected. Lastly, before we jump into the migration, I want to show you the infrastructure real quick. I have two GKE clusters, one running Migrate for GKE, the other running the sample application. You can see that's an autopilot cluster. Now, if I click on workloads, you can see all of the services running there for the online boutique. To perform the actual migration, I'll start by running an analysis using Migrate for GKE's migration fit tool to see if our workload is a good candidate for migration. Next, I'll create a migration plan, and I edit it to specify that we want to enable the resulting container to run on GKE Autopilot. From there, I'll execute the actual migration. This will result in a set of artifacts, including a Docker file, a container image, and a pair of YAML files. One to deploy the Kubernetes services and deployment, and another to manage the configuration of those primitives. I'll then deploy the newly migrated workload using the Kubernetes YAML. Finally, I'll edit the configuration for the currently running services to point them to the newly deployed Kubernetes service, replacing the virtual machine's DNS name with the Kubernetes service name. The first step in any migration process should be to ensure that the targeted workload is a good candidate for migration. With the 1.8 release of Migrate for GKE, we've introduced via public preview a new migration fit assessment tool. This tool can operate against VMs running on VMware vSphere by directly interacting with the vSphere APIs, or it can be run directly against a single VM. In the case of our demo today, I'm operating directly on the VM I want to migrate, which happens to be running on Google Compute Engine. But like I said, it could just as easily be running on VMware. Additionally, Migrate for GKE also supports migrating workloads from AWS and Azure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Fit Assessment Tool in action. I'll run the Fit Assessment Tool, which will gather information about the processes and services running on my VM. Then I'll import the resulting data, which is stored in a tar file, into the Fit Assessment database. I can use the ls command to get a list of VMs that I've gathered data from previously. Next, I'll have the Fit Tool analyze the collected information. Once it's finished its assessment, I will have it produce a report on its findings. The report can be in HTML or JSON. I'm going to specify JSON so I can upload it to the Google Cloud Console later. Also, while I'm only analyzing a single VM in this demo, you can batch process this analysis. Now that I have the report, I'm going to upload it to the Google Cloud Console, and you can see the result here. My application is a good fit for migration. If I want to see exactly what was found on the VM, I can drill down and take a look here at some of the details. Before I can actually migrate a VM, I need to stop it. So let me move into the shell here and issue the stop instances command. I'll speed up the video a little bit, and when that's finished, we can move on. So I've already created a processing cluster and defined a source, so let's define our migration. We'll click Create Migration. I'm going to call it Payment Service. We're going to select the source I created earlier. It's Linux, and the VM name is Payment Service VM. We're going to use the image intent. We'll click Create Migration and wait for that to finish. All right, now we can move on. So let's go in and edit the actual migration plan. Now I need to make a change in here to ensure that the resulting containers can run on autopilot. So I'll come in, and I'm going to add an annotation up here near the top. So I'll hit enter, and I'll paste the annotation in. Then I'm going to scroll down, and I want to change the service and the image name from Payment Service VM to just Payment Service. So we'll change it here, and we'll change it here. We'll click Generate Artifacts. That'll take a few minutes, so I'm going to speed up this video and rejoin you when it's finished. 
the migration is finished and I've downloaded the resulting artifacts into Cloud Shell. So let's take a look at the config.yaml file. The config.yaml file is used to control a bunch of different aspects of the container that's going to run, including what processes are running in the container, some things about the file system and how it's laid out. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I just wanted you to be aware of this file because you may have to edit it in the future. So let's go ahead and apply the deployment spec.yaml that was generated. This is going to create two Kubernetes primitives, the service and the deployment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pods and see if our new service is up and running yet. It looks like it's actually still pending, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll rejoin you once it's started. Okay, it's been a few minutes, so let's clear the screen and take another look. And it looks like our uh, pod is up and running. So let's go ahead now, we'll clear the screen again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check out the online boutique. Let's go ahead and get the services so we can get that external IP address. And we'll copy that up and we'll paste it in here and let's try to buy something. So the camera, add to cart, complete the purchase. You see an error. Now that's because while I have the new service running, my VM is stopped and the application is still trying to access it. So what I need to do is I need to add edit the deployment spec for the actual application. And right here, you can see where we set that payment service address. So let me change that from the DNS name of the VM to the service name of the Kubernetes service. I'll save that out. We'll go back into the command line and I'll apply that deployment spec so that we can update the services to look not at the VM, but at that new container we just deployed. So we'll apply that out. You can see all the configuration changes coming along here. And now I'm going to go ahead once again, make sure that the pods have started up. Looks like the pod has started up successfully. So let's go ahead and move back to the online boutique and let's try to buy that camera again. So we'll click add to cart. We'll click place order and everything works as expected. We have migrated the payment service from the virtual machine to a container running on GKE autopilot.